if you are preparing for SEBI grade A examination, I have made a complete strategy video on this. It has been watched by over 10,000 people and you can find it over here. So if you want, go check it out. And I have also created SEBI specific current affairs exclusive to SEBI. These current affairs, you are not going to get anywhere else. So I have made a playlist of the January and the February SEBI related current affairs and I'll be making even more going forward. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing as my goal is to bring you all these exclusive content for free and you will not get all of these content anywhere else. Other people are going to charge you for it, but I want to give it to you for free and I want to help you achieve your dreams. So if you want to go on that journey with me, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please leave a like on the video and please share it with your friends. So let's begin with the video. Hi, there is Supriyo. So the goal with this video, it is to help you understand what can be asked in the financial awareness section of the SEBI grade A examination. Now, uh, I hope that you have gone through the syllabus and there is a section uh, which states that you will be asked general awareness questions, which will be pertaining towards the uh, financial awareness, uh, towards the financial sector. So those are the kinds of questions that I have tried to frame in this MCQ series and there are are static questions as well as dynamic questions so these are the kinds of questions that you can uh, expect to be asked in these uh, in this examination and also it will help you in the RBI grade B examination the NABARD examination all the other bank examination bank and insurance examinations which uh, ask questions based on financial awareness now what I want from you is just attempt these questions yourself and tell me what you score at the end of this video I really really want to urge you to attempt these questions do not feel ashamed from commenting just let me know what is your score then i'll also be able to give you proper advice regarding what you need to cover so if you do not tell me how where you stand then i cannot help you right so be honest attempt all of these things and at the end just tally out your marks take a piece of paper write down the uh, answers and just verify it uh, tally out your scores and let me know at the end how much you have scored in this mcq so let's begin with the question number one the first question who was the first chairman of SEBI? So these types of questions are very common. So uh, as I talk you through these questions, I will also give you some information. So it will help you to prepare for SEBI in a better manner. And also it will help you understand the world of financial awareness, understand about the uh, context in which these questions are being asked to you. So this question, the first chairman of SEBI, the answer to this question, it is S.A. Dave. Now, uh, it's a very interesting thing that if you go ahead and Google this question, Google will tell you that the answer is G.V. Ramakrishnan, but it's not the correct answer. The correct answer is S.A. Dave. And uh, many people actually <laughs> had a lot of doubt regarding this, but uh, S.A. Dave is the correct answer. I can assure you that. And uh, so this is just a lesson to you that do not always rely on Google. So just try and read as much as possible and understand those things. So let's move to question number two now. SEBI circuit breaker introduced in 2001 contains three tiers of predefined values of triggers. So what are these three tiers? Uh, the circuit breaker of SEBI. So uh, what's the answer? Let's first see the answer to this. The answer is 10%, 15% and 20%. Now uh, these circuit breakers, what do they do actually? So uh, they are actually put in place in uh, stock exchanges by the uh, regulator and what it helps is that whenever the indices are sliding down too fast, so if in a day the index falls by 10%, automatically the circuit breaker is triggered and all the trading activity is stopped for a certain amount of time. So this happens when it falls by 10%, or by 15% and by 20%. So all of these various triggers, they help to insulate the market from speculative attacks. And uh, there are various kinds of other uh, percentages for the other indexes as well. So for example, the S&P 500, they have some triggers of 7%, 13% and 20%. And recently, uh, S&P 500, the first level of that trigger, the 7% one was actually overshot. And even in our markets, the first level was overshot and it was a historic moment. So 
because of the coronavirus and all of the concerns of the economy this had actually happened so just remember all of these things and also the percentages very important let's move to question number 3 what is rbi's current repo rate and reverse repo rate uh you need to remember all the repo rates and the reverse repo rates so as of april 16 2020 as of today i am telling you this but if your exam is actually delayed go ahead to the rbi website and you will be able to check uh, the current policy rates so uh, what is the answer to this question it is 4.4% and 4 Four percent. So repo rate is four point four percent, and reverse repo rate is four uh, percent. And I have also talked all about the repo rate and the reverse repo rate in the video that I have made on the LAF, the Liquidity Adjustment Facility. So go check it out if you want to learn more about it. Uh, so that's the answer, and let's move ahead into question number four. Which organization became the third Indian firm to cross hundred billion dollar mark in market capitalization? Uh, the market capitalization. What's the formula? It's the price of one share multiplied by the number of outstanding shares. Uh, so, which is the organization that became the third Indian firm to cross hundred billion dollar mark in market cap or M cap? Uh, the answer to this it is HDFC Bank Limited. So, the first firm to do this was Reliance Industries. The second firm it was uh, T. CS Tata Consultancy Services Limited and the third firm it is HDFC Bank remember it uh, let's move to question number 5 RBI's operation twist has a basic principle that involves what the answer to this it is purchase of long term bonds and sale of short term bonds uh, operation twist is something that the rbi has actually borrowed from the ecb the european central bank uh, and uh, i have actually made a full video about operation twist so if any of you are preparing for rbi it is very very important that you check out that video you understand the concept well because it is a very important topic for the 2020 examination uh, let's go to the next question What does the I stand for in C R I L C? The answer is information. So the C R I L C, what is the full form of it? The full form is Central Repository of Information on Large Credits. So the threshold level of reporting in C R I L C, which is actually maintained by RBI, it is five crore rupees. Uh, remember that I have already talked about it in some previous videos. Let's move to question number seven. A new G O M group of ministers was convened. to expedite revival plan of psnl and mtnl what is the amount involved the answer for this is 69000 crore remember this figure because it is a, a very important revival figure of psnl and mtnl and as we know that they are uh, very much struggling in the recent times uh, to gather funds and they are having uh, they were actually not able to pay off their employees as well so a lot of problems were there in the telecom industry at large the telecom industry is also going through the agr issues so i have also talked about the agr issues in a previous video of mine so you can check it out if you want and uh, the 1.47 trillion rupees problem of the agr cases so those things are important to understand for any aspirants that are preparing for any bank exams uh, let's move to question number 8 finance ministry launched which platform for e auction of assets attached by banks banks they sometimes attach the assets of the defaulters who are unable to pay so there will be an e auction and what is the platform the answer is E B K R A Y. So E B K R A Y. It is the name of the new platform they have launched. Let's move to question number nine. Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank A W I B sanctioned how much loan for irrigation and solar energy projects in India? And uh, these types of questions, where uh, a multilateral body has given some amount of loan to uh, India or uh, for some some uh, any kind of uh, projects, so you have to remember all of those figures. They are very very important. So any kinds of such figures, if you uh, come across in the news, make it a habit that you are noting it down. You are putting it in your notes because these. Uh, figures are very very important uh, the answer for this it is 210 million dollars question number 10 asian development bank adb signed a loan for a public private partnership project of highway development in madhya pradesh worth how much the answer is 490 million dollars question number 11 when was sebi given statutory powers to regulate indian securities market a very interesting question uh, the answer to this question it is 
30th January 1992. So, uh, so now remember that SEBI, uh, it, ha uh, it was actually established in 1988, the first time that the Securities Exchange Board of India was actually established. But uh, the statutory powers, which is the SEBI Act, it was actually passed in 1992. So 30th January 1992, SEBI actually got the uh, statutory powers. So statutory powers is the powers with reference to an act of parliament. And uh, that is when they actually started to regulate the securities market. Uh, so let's move to question number 12. The Reserve Bank of India was set up on the basis of the recommendations of which commission? A very, very important question. And these types of questions you always have to remember for all the exams. Uh, the answer for this is Hilton Young Commission. Question number 13. Government of India and Asian Development Bank signed a loan for Energy Efficiency Services Limited worth how much? The answer, it is $250 million. Question number 14 now, which company launched India's first corporate bond ETF called the Bharat Bond ETF? The answer is Edelweiss Asset Management Company. And now ETFs, they are exchange traded funds. So uh, ETF, they are actually listed in stock exchanges and you can trade on them over any exchange. So these are, uh, you can say a pool of securities, a pool of investments. So you can buy an ETF and it will help you to invest in multiple sectors, in multiple companies, and you can also easily trade it. So just like shares, you can just trade ETFs and it's a very popular investment vehicle. Uh, so let's move to question number 15. NTPC signed a term loan with SBI for how much amount for financing CapEx? What is CapEx? It is capital expenditure. There are two types of expenditures, capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. So capital uh, expenditure, it is for fixed assets and new fixed assets, whatever a company or any country is investing in. And uh, these will be uh, giving you revenue for a long amount of time. And revenue expenditure, these are mainly your recurring investment. So if you are paying salaries, if you are uh, doing some upkeep of a project, that is revenue expenditure. And CapEx is actually helping you create new uh, fixed assets and uh, the answer to this it is 5000 crore rupees so these types of questions are also very important regarding the PSUs whatever kind of deals they are doing question number 16 RBI Act 1934 provides statutory basis for functioning of RBI on which date did RBI commence operations very very important question the answer to this is April 1 1935 Remember, the RBI Act, it is actually an act of 1934. However, the actual uh, commencement of the operations of RBI, it happened in 1935. So note this uh, distinction. Let's move to number 17. UN's World Economic Situation and Prospects WESP report 2020 showed 2019 global growth at 10 year low of how much? The answer is 2.3%. So important percentages of uh, important institutions you need to memorize. Let's move to question number 18. The RBI Central Board of Directors comprises how many members currently as on April 2020? The answer is 14. And I'll just put up a picture so you can see who are in the board of directors. Uh, so there is the governor of the RBI. There are also uh, three, uh, four uh, deputy governors. And uh, after that, there are also nine other members who are actually helping to uh, run the central board of directors. So let's move to question number 19. What is the maximum time given to states to vacate the ways and means advances, WMAs? Uh, so the ways and means advances, these help the uh, state government to actually get money for their operations. And uh, these need to be uh, returned back to the RBI. So the amount of days given for this, it is 90 days. And uh, this is the answer, of course. And uh, we note another very important thing that there is uh, something called an OD facility, an overdraft facility in the WMA. So you can, if you are a state, you can borrow uh, more than what is the limit in your WMA. But if you get an OD like this, more than the WMA, then this OD facility, it has to be vacated within 10 days. So remember this 10 days for the OD facility and for the WMA, it is 90 days maximum term. Uh, so let's move to question number 20 now. Now, deposits in which category of institutions are not eligible for insurance under DICGC? So DICGC, Deposit Insurance Credit Guarantee Corporation and uh, this uh, institution, it actually uh, insures the amount about uh, 5 lakhs. Right now it insures uh, 5 lakhs in every bank. 
So it was actually announced in the budget and DICGC is a very important uh, subject in our bank exams this year. So what's the answer to this question? It is primary cooperative societies. So these are the only uh, societies you can say which actually take deposits but the deposits are not insured by the DICGC and make sure that you cover DICGC very very well for this uh, year and I hope that you are noting down all of the uh, answers and uh, how much points you are scoring. So at the end make sure that you comment down below and let me know how much you got because I want to know how much is the highest score and it will actually give you an impetus to perform better the next time around. Uh, so let's move to question number 21 now. The 50th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum was held recently at Davos, Switzerland. Who led the Indian delegation? Uh, the answer to this it is Piyush Goel. So our uh, Commerce and Industries Minister uh, Piyush Goel, he was the uh, person who has led the Indian delegation at Davos uh, this year and uh, just remember that each and every year at Davos, Switzerland, the World Economic Forum meets and this meet it is attended by most of the countries and it is a very high profile meeting. So remember this. Uh, so let's move to uh, question number 22. So this question again refers to the WEF. Uh, what was the theme of the 50th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum? Now uh, remember, uh, I have already told you about all the themes that you must remember. So always make it a point to remember the themes of any kind of festivals or any kind of meetings, whatever you read about in the news. Uh, the answer for this question, it is stakeholders for a cohesive and sustainable world. And also remember another thing that uh, this uh, 50th meeting, one of the a very interesting things that was discussed at Davos this year it was the principle of stakeholder capitalism so just google that and read about it a little bit uh, it will be something that is uh, quite important uh, for everybody to know so let's move to question number 23 ICICI Bank and Axis Bank received permission to close their operations in which country so which country they are going to close their operations the answer is Sri Lanka so the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has permitted them to close their operations in that country. Let's move to question number 24. Which is the oldest stock exchange in the world? A very very important question regardless of uh, whatever exam you are giving. And uh, so it is the oldest stock exchange in the world. And uh, the answer to this it is Amsterdam Stock Exchange. Uh, now uh, remember that the Amsterdam Stock Exchange this was actually started in 1602, 1602 and it was started by the Dutch East India Company. So the Dutch also had an East India Company just like the British and they were the ones who had started this. Uh, so let's move over to the next question. When was the Exim Bank set up? The Export Import Bank of India and uh, this bank it actually helps the importers and the exporters of India and there is also a lot of facilitation that this bank uh, actually helps the exporters to do. Uh, so the, which when was it uh, set up? The answer is 1982. Question number 26. Who recommended the differentiated banking system comprising of small finance banks and payment banks? So these types of banks, they are known as differentiated banks. Uh, the answer to this, it is Nachiket Moore Committee, Dr. Nachiket Moore Committee. And uh, remember that he was the first proponent of these types of banks, uh, which would be uh, somewhat similar to our traditional banks, but would do some differentiated functions. Uh, let's move to question number 27. What are blue chip companies? A very important question. The answer is companies that are established, stable and profitable. So any kind of company which is quite big and stable and uh, you can almost rely on these companies. Uh, these are the blue chip companies and you might have seen uh, blue chip uh, mutual funds and blue chip stocks being talked about. So that's what it means. Uh, let's move to question number 28. M. Narasimhan committee was formed twice for banking reforms which were the years. So in which two years M. Narasimhan committee was formed. So committee number one and number two. The answer is 1991 for committee one and committee two was in 1998. Let's move to question number 29. Investors that quickly move in and out of positions to profit from short term movements in stock market are called what? The answer is stag investors. Remember what are bull investors, remember the bear investors and the stag investors. So all three categories of investors are very important uh, to understand and remember. Let's move to question number 30. 
Mutual Fund Industry began in 1963 with an entity created by Government of India and Reserve Bank of India. Which, what was the name of this entity? The answer, it is Unit Trust of India. So Unit Trust of India, UTI, it was uh, the first organization that actually began the mutual fund industry in our country. Question number 31. SBI mutual fund was the first non-UTI mutual fund in India. When did it begin? Uh, answer is 1987. A very important thing to remember. Number 32. A multi-bagger stock is a cheap equity stock which is expected to give a return in the future of how much? Answer, it is greater than 100%. So there are uh, various kinds of categorizations like there is a 10-bagger which is expected to give you uh, greater than 10% re results and uh, there is also a 20-bagger greater than 20% and a multi-bagger is greater than 100%. Question number 33. NABARD was set up as an all India financial institution to monitor credit delivery to agro sector under recommendations of which committee? The answer it is B. Sivaravan committee. Uh, so I hope that you are understanding what kind of questions can come. There can be static questions as well as dynamic questions in the financial awareness uh, part. So uh, remember to carefully cover everything. And please remember to write down your score once you have finished off with this uh, MCQ and it will actually help you to know where you stand and I can give you some pointers by seeing your score. Uh, so let's move to question number 34. What is SEBI's definition of mid cap fund? Now we have already talked about this in one of our previous videos and that's why I put this question to see how many of you get this right and uh, the answer is firms ranked between 101 and 250 by full market capitalization. So remember these definitions very well, uh, especially ones that have been given by SEBI. They can be asked at any point of time. Question number 35. Which among the following are not part of the big three CRAs, credit rating agencies? Answer, it is TransUnion Group. So all of these three, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, Fitch Group, all these three, they are part of the Three, the big three CRAs, credit rating agencies. So they are the top dogs of the credit rating agency uh, industry in the world. So remember these three names very, very well. Let's move to question number 36. Kospi is the stock market index of which country? Answer, it is South Korea. 37. The price at which you buy one unit of a mutual fund is called what? Uh, it's a very important and an interesting question. The answer it is NAV net asset value. So uh, remember that uh, the price of one unit of a mutual fund it is the net asset value of that mutual fund and it's a very important term that you must study. Let's move to number 38 which is the biggest country on earth without a stock exchange and name the stock exchange that will start in 2020. This is actually a big news, a big international news and uh, the answer is Ethiopia and the stock exchange's name, it's going to be Addis Ababa Stock Exchange. So Ethiopia was one of the uh, biggest countries on earth which was without a, a stock exchange and now they'll be getting one. Question number 39. Mastercard will acquire which firm that specializes in data analytics solutions and artificial intelligence. So you can see even Mastercard and all these uh, huge companies, they are also interested in data analytics and the AI. So they are ac acquiring startups. So what's the startup they acquired? It is uh, Risk Recon. Question number 40. When was the NABARD set up? So the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, it's a very important regulator, one of the regulators in uh, the uh, agricultural sector. So agricultural loans and all the refinance schemes, it actually helps. So the answer is for 12 July 1982. Question number 41. NPCI recently launched which blockchain platform based on DLT, the distributed ledger technology. So distributed ledger technology, this is actually a blockchain enabled technology and it's a very important question. Answer is Vajra platform. So uh, remember that it is the DLT or the distributed ledger technology and also remember the name. Both of these things are very important to note. Let's move to number 42 now. The practice in which an investor borrows shares and immediately sells it to scoop them up later at a lower price. What is this called? It is called shorting. 
and uh, you must understand uh, what actually short selling is so short selling is just like this so you don't have a share you are going to go to somebody you are going to borrow their share so you took that share and you immediately sold it so why are you doing this because uh, that share price you are expecting that that company's share price is going to plummet so you sell it right away and once the share price plummets you buy that share back at a lower cost and then you pay the uh, pay back the person from which you had originally borrowed the uh, borrowed the share so this kind of short selling it is a very very risky investment strategy and in fact it is one of the riskiest uh, investments that you can do but there are many uh, renowned players in the stock market who uh, do this daily and uh, it's not uh, something for the faint of heart and uh, it's a very high stakes game but it's a very interesting thing uh, let's move to number 43 which company's MSME loan business was acquired by Adani Capital, the NBFC arm of the Adani Group? So which company it was? It was SL Finance. Question number 44, the new chief executive officer of the Indian Banks Association, the IBA. So the IBA, it is the association that represents almost all the bankers. So you can say it's kind of the head of the union of all the bankers. Uh, the answer is Sunil Mehta. Number 45, who is the new MD and CEO of Canara Bank? It is Lingam Venkat Prabhakar. 46, who is the new MD and CEO of Bank of Baroda? Uh, this answer, it is Sanjeev Chadha. Question number 47, highly speculative stocks which are worth less than $1 are called what? So the name for these types of stocks, they are penny stocks. Number 48, BSE Inc. licensing agreement with which company to use Brent Index as a settlement benchmark? A very important question. Uh, this company, it is ICE Futures Europe. So uh, remember this and uh, this Brent Index, it has now uh, been implemented by the BSE and they are going to use it as a settlement benchmark. So it will actually help in the uh, in deepening the commodity derivatives market in uh, our uh, nation. And uh, let's move to number 49. Maharashtra signed an agreement with World Bank for agribusiness and rural transformation project worth how much? It is 210 million dollars and as I have told you all these banks World Bank then you have the ADB you have the AIIB whatever kinds of loans they are sanctioning whatever kinds of projects in which they are partnering always remember what projects the name of the project and also the figures so anytime uh, these exams can ask you the uh, figures and they can also ask you the name of the project in which they are involved uh, now we have reached question number 50 the investment policy of Warren Buffett which entails buying stocks at less than their intrinsic value is called uh, answer it is value investing so value investing is something that Warren Buffett has been pushing his whole life and there are lots of books on value investing so I hope that you are uh, writing down your answers in a piece of paper and you are checking before you are seeing the answers because it will actually help you so much so make sure that at the end you comment down below and if you are enjoying this video please make sure to like it uh, so let's move to question number 51 who is the new MD and CEO of Bank of India? Answer, it is Atanu Kumar Das. Question number 52. In the last five fiscals, the urban cooperative banks have reported over 1,000 cases of fraud worth how much? It's a very important figure. It is 220 crores. So greater than 220 crores worth of fraud. And the number of cases also you must remember over 1,000 cases. Question number 53. Who is the new president of the FIKI? The FIKI, what is the full form? Remember the full form as well of the FIKI. It is the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Uh, the answer uh, to this question, it is Sangeeta Reddy, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy. Let's move to number 54. Which is the largest and most volatile market in the world with daily trading volumes of $5.1 trillion as of 2019? very very important question and a very uh, important concept to remember uh, it is the forex market so the forex market it has the highest volumes per day can you imagine 5.1 trillion dollars per day they are moving so it's a very very important number to remember question number 55 how much did visa pay to acquire played a startup that develops apis to share banking and financial information uh, so the amount it is 5.3 billion dollars Question number 56, 
name the startup that helps MSMEs streamline business transactions and it has received investment by MS Dhoni. Uh, so it is Khata Book. Next question. Name the country which became the newest member of the IMF in 2016. So the International Monetary Fund, newest member of that. The answer is Nauru. So uh, remember also uh, some important things regarding these multilateral organizations. So for example, you must remember the IMF's headquarters. You must remember who is the president or who is the chairman of the IMF. You must also remember the latest edition. So Nauru, it actually became the 189th member, the 189th member of uh, the uh, IMF. So the IMF and World Bank, they are actually sister organizations, you can say. So study a little bit about these things and remember all of these things so uh, let's move to question number 58 when was uh, the nifty established the answer is april 21 1996 59 who is the current president of the world bank as i told you a very important question the answer is david malpass uh, question number 60 which one of the following is not an OTC instrument so OTC it is the over the counter instrument uh, so if you have read about derivatives uh, the OTC derivatives they are the derivatives which are traded over the counter so there is not a regulated uh, agency in which they are done but over the counter so you and I we can uh, off market go ahead and trade in these things so which of the following cannot be traded as an OTC instrument so the answer to this it is futures and uh, remember some people have a confusion regarding options there are some OTC options so these are actually uh, exotic options and you can be trading that in a OTC manner so a uh, futures you cannot go ahead and trade as an OTC uh, instrument uh, so let's move to question number 61 what type of bond allows the issuer to reduce the tenor by paying it off before the maturity date uh, what type of bond is it it is callable bond so remember that uh, callable bonds are the bonds in which uh, they do not have to go till the end of the tenure. So if I am the issuer of that bond, I can decide that, okay, I am going to pay you back the maturity amount and whatever interest is outstanding, I can pay you uh, back before the term is ending. So that is a kind of a risk that the investor uh, invests in. So these are callable bonds. Uh, so also remember what are zero coupon bonds they pay no interest and uh, the uh, putable bonds also these are also very important things that you must remember and you must uh, read all of these things for your SEBI grade A examination and even for RBI you need to know all of these things uh, question number 62 according to section 149.1 of the companies act 2013 what's the minimum number of directors in the case of a private company so the answer is two so minimum two number of directors must be there in case of a private company remember very very important the section of the companies act which actually measure uh, mentions this question number 63 which one of the following cities does not have a currency printing press answer is hyderabad uh, so all of the other three cities that you can see they all have currency printing presses so there are four currency printing presses uh, remember the locations so I'll put up the, on the screen the locations so these are the locations of all of the uh, four currency printing presses let's move to question number 64 if there are no transactions in a folio mutual fund issues the CAS once every so CAS is it is the consolidated account statement so it is issued once every six months Question number 65, who is the chief economist of the World Bank? A very important question and uh, she is a very accomplished and a distinguished lady and you might have seen many interviews that she gives in various news channels. The answer is Geeta Gopinath. Question number 66, minimum net worth requirement of an AMC mandated by SEBI. So minimum net worth, it is 50 crore rupees. And this was actually recently raised. Earlier it was a lower figure. It has recently been raised. And uh, question number 67, SEBI's insider trading mechanism announced in 2019 was a result of recommendations of which committee? Which committee recommended it? It was the TK Vishwanathan committee. Question number 68, name the perpetual bonds issued by US and UK governments that were used to raise money by government from citizens. So what were these bonds? These bonds, they were called 
consoles so these bonds they are perpetual bonds so this means that they do not have an end date but uh, the government they can go ahead and pay it off so these are all paid off right now but in the war time situations these were actually used by these governments and they got money from the citizens so let's move to the next question as per the economic survey 2019-20 sebi has one employee for every dash listed companies so how many listed companies it is six listed companies and this is actually a matter of concern for us because even the sec of america the securities exchange commission they also have one employee per listed company but we have only one employee per six listed companies so sebi needs to uh, actually correct this and that's why they are recruiting so uh, the more recruitment that they do the more people we will be having so let's hope that they increase the recruitments going forward in the next years uh, question number 70 who is the chair of the executive board and managing director of the IMF uh, the answer is Kristalina Georgieva 71 the FEMA act was enacted in which year superseding the FERA 1973 uh, answer of this question it is 1999 so remember that FEMA the full form is very important foreign exchange management act it was actually enacted in 1999 and earlier we used to have the FERA the foreign exchange regulation act it was uh, actually enacted in 1973 so remember the full forms and the years uh, question number 72 BSE Sensex's CAGR compounded annual growth rate since 1979 to 2019 40 years has been how much it's a very very important question uh, the answer is 16.1 percent and uh, some sources will actually tell you it's 16.09 percent we can round it off to 16.1 percent so that is the compounded annual growth rate of the sensex since the last 40 years so it's a very important figure to remember 73 according to section 149.1 of the companies act 2013 what's the maximum number of directors in case of a private company so maximum number of directors it is 15 directors so this is also a very important thing maximum directors minimum directors these questions are oftentimes framed so make sure that uh, you note these things especially well Question number 74, what is the other name of 81 bonds designed to absorb losses in case banks equity capital dips below certain thresholds? So 81, the additional tier 1 bonds, uh, so you know it is about the Basel 3 norms. So I'll not get uh, too much into detail right now, uh, but these types of bonds, they are actually used so that uh, the risk, it can be transferred to the market and the investors in the bank and the uh, depositors in the bank, they do not have that much risk. So the answer for this, it is cocoa bonds the full form of these bonds are contingent convertible bonds so it's a very important question and these bonds are very much important in the global scenario in the contemporary times the market is very concerned about cocoa bonds uh, let's move to question number 75 which SBI managing director was recently appointed MD and CFO of the World Bank so she has become the chief risk officer of the World Bank answer is Anshula Kant 76 who is the chief economic advisor of India? A very easy question. Answer is Krishnamurti Subramaniam. 77. Which document states the maximum authorized share capital value under the heading of capital clause? So the answer of this, it is Memorandum of Association, the MOA. So Articles of Association and Memorandum of Association, both of these things are very, very important for the SEBI grade examination. Make sure that you read about the clauses of both of these documents. Question number 78, minimum NTA net tangible assets in each of the preceding three years for a company to be eligible for an IPO. The answer is 3 crores. So the net tangible assets for each of the preceding three years uh, must be 3 crores at least. So each of the three years remember. And remember that these net tangible assets, not more than 50% of them can be in the form of monetary assets. So there are various kinds of clauses and sub clauses for an IPO and you can go through them and just remember each and every one of them. Uh, number 79, units of which type of mutual funds must be listed on the stock exchange? So they must be listed. Answer is close-ended funds. So close-ended funds, you cannot invest them on a recurring basis. You can only invest in them at the beginning and then they are traded on the stock exchange and their net asset value changes accordingly. So let's move to number 80. 
who is the president of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. It is Sir Suma Chakravarti. Uh, now, remember that EBRD, India has recently become the 69th member of the EBRD and uh, they actually call it as a shareholder. So, India has become the 69th shareholder of the EBRD. So, it's a uh, little important that you remember this name and about the EBRD. Number 81 now. SEBI's framework for PIDs, Public Interest Directors, stipulates that they will be nominated for how many years? Uh, it is three years. So PID regulations are very important and they have actually previously been asked by uh, the SEBI in one of their examinations. So remember this especially well. Question number 82. What is the minimum and maximum period for which a rights issue may remain open? So the answer for this, it is 15 days and 30 days. So minimum, it is 15 days and the maximum, it is 30 days. Question number 83, an MF application form is attached to which document? So what document is it attached to? The answer is KIM. So the key information memorandum, KIM, it's a very important document. Also, you need to remember the SID and the SAI, the scheme information document and the statement of additional information. So these are all documents pertaining to mutual funds and uh, very important to note the purpose of these documents. Question number 84, SEBI's online platform which allows investors to lodge securities market related complaints is called what? So the answer to this, it is SCORES platform. The full form of SCORES is also important. So remember it, SEBI complaints redress system. Question number 85, a legal document that contains details of trades done by a broker on behalf of a client is called what? So the answer is contract note. Question number 86, SEBI enumerated SAST regulations back in 2011. The first S in SAST stands for what? It stands for substantial. So the full form again you have to remember it is the substantial acquisition of shares and takeover. Let's move to number 87. In which year was the NISM established by the SEBI? So NISM, it is the National Institute of Securities Market and it actually helps people to get trained regarding the security market. Uh, so SEBI established it in the year 2006. 88. Book building norms are explained in SEBI's SCRR, Securities Contracts Regulation Rules, drafted in which year? The year is 1957. 89. SEBI mandates MPS rules for public and private companies. So what is the full form of MPS? The full form is minimum public shareholding. MPS rules are very, very important and uh, just make a note of it. So question number 90, uh, this is also related to MPS. The 2019 budget proposed that MPS rules will be changed and non-promoter stake will now be increased to how much? Uh, the answer is 35%. So remember earlier the MPS rules, they actually stated that 25% of uh, the shares in a listed company must be with the general public. So 25% must be with non-promoters. And right now, the 2019 budget, they had actually mentioned that it was to be raised to 35%. And this was actually a very contentious thing because uh, each of these listed companies, they had to offload 10% of their shares and they had to give it to the public, right? And if they want to give it, they have to either give it through an offer for sale or they have to give it through an FPO. So these kinds of things would be very expensive and that is why people were very worried about this. So read a bit about these regulations also. They are very important. Uh, number 91, minimum capital requirement for new private banks to get on tap banking license from the RBI. The answer is 500 crore. So if you have 500 crore, you can go ahead and approach the RBI to set up your own private bank. But can you do it? No, because you need some uh, fit and proper criteria. So these are criteria are also there. So many different kinds of conditions you have to uh, satisfy before you can go ahead and open your own bank. Uh, number 92, three in one accounts are a combination of what type of accounts? Very, very important question. This is the answer is trading account, DMAT account and bank account. So these three types of accounts are bundled together in a three in one account. Question number 93, SEBI allows IPOs through either 100% book building process or through dash percent book building and dash percent fixed price. Uh, answer of this is 75% book building and 25% fixed price. So these are the uh, only two ways in which you can go through an IPO. Question number 94, online trading system of NSE is called NEAT. What does A stand for in NEAT? The answer is automated. 
सो वट्स द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ एन ई इट इज द नेशनल एक्सचेंज फॉर ऑटोमेटेड ट्रेनिंग क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी फाइव द प्रिसाइडिंग ऑफिसर ऑफ द सिक्योरिटीज एपलेट ट्राइब्यूनल मस्ट होल्ड ऑफिस फॉर एटलीस्ट हाउ मच सो वट इज द टेन ईयर इट इज फाइव ईयर्स और अप टू एज ऑफ सेवेंटी ईयर्स नाउ रिमेंबर दिस वॉज अर्लियर सिक्सटी एट ईयर्स बट वेरी रिसेंटली अ फ्यू ईयर्स अगो बाई अ गैजेट नोटिफिकेशन द गवर्नमेंट हैज चेंज इट सो नाउ इट इज फाइव ईयर्स और अप टू एन एज ऑफ सेवेंटी ईयर्स सो रिमेंबर एवरीथिंग रिगार्डिंग द सिक्योरिटीज एपलेट ट्राइब्यूनल इट्स कॉम्पोजिशन इट्स मेंबर्स वट टाइप ऑफ मेंबर्स आर देयर सो दीज थिंग्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी सिक्स वट इज द मिनिमम लॉक इन पीरियड आफ्टर अलॉटमेंट ऑफ अ शेयर अंडर एन ई एस पी एस सो वट इज एन ई एस पी एस इट इज एम्प्लॉई स्टॉक परचेज स्कीम एंड इट मीन्स द सेम थिंग एज एन ई सॉप एक्चुअली सो द आंसर टू दिस इट इज वन ईयर नाइन्टी सेवन सेबी हैज लिमिटेड द मैक्सिमम बाई बैक परसेंटेज टू डैश परसेंटेज ऑफ द कंपनीज एग्रीगेट पेड अप कैपिटल एंड फ्री रिजर्व सो द आंसर इज ट्वेंटी Number ninety-eight. The minimum net worth stipulated by SEBI for a depository is how much? So the minimum net worth for a depository it is one hundred crore rupees. Question number ninety-nine. Each security is allotted a unique ISIN number. What is the number of digits ISIN contains? So what is the number of digits? It is twelve digits. And also remember the full form of the ISIN. It is the International Securities Identification Number. Next question. Name the online trading system of BSE. So, what is the online trading system? It is Bolt. And what is the full form of Bolt? It is the BSE's online trading system. And uh, now we move to the final question for tonight. It is question number hundred and one. All DMAT transactions involve the use of a DIS. The full form of this is what? It is delivery instruction slip. So these are actually issued by the DPs or the de uh, depository participants. So we have come to the end of the session. I hope that you have tallied down your scores. So write down in the comments below how much you have scored. I would really like to see how much you have scored. And please like this video if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends so everybody can get access to this knowledge. And please subscribe. to my channel for more such content in the future i hope that you learned something from this video and that it was beneficial to you i'll see you in the next one bye bye